Hi there. So in uh, previous videos we have looked into Ableton Live, Pro Tools and Logic Pro X how to do audio processing within the Digital Audio Workstation. Now we will dive into Studio One and see how to do parallel processing, bus mixes and uh, sidechaining in uh, Studio One. So let's get going with Studio One and see how it's done. Okay, let's look into Studio One and see how the audio routing is done within Studio One and to apply sidechaining, parallel processing and submixing. We already looked how to deal with audio with tracks and channels. So now we will focus on a kind of a bit more advanced processing and, and how and what kind of workflow improvements uh, and, and tricks you have in, in the different digital audio workstations. So let's Let's get going with Studio One and let's create two tracks, audio tracks first. Let's make them stereo. Uh, this could be a uh, 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 like just an audio. Mm. And uh, this could be, for example, we could bring a kick here. So let's name them accordingly. So audio and kick and then maybe let's open up a mixer and, and bring the audio file into, into the project. So if I now play, the audio is playing direct and um, there is no processing, no parallel, nothing. Then of course the standard processing would be that you insert an effect over here and then you know you, you you have that processing in place. Um, that's kind of the standard processing that you most likely are very familiar with. But then how to do a parallel processing in, um, in, in Studio One? Um, actually, it has few neat tricks. One trick is that uh, when you go into the effects and if you like to, you know, have a reverb in your parallel processing, mode you basically take that and and you bring it into the send section and when you drop it it will create you an fx channel where the 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 plugin is and in this case the valhalla vintage verb and vintage verb and um, and then it automatically also creates a send into that so Now you can hear that now the parallel processing is taking place and the audio is routed from here also to, to this FS channel. And here of course there are the, the pre and post that you can uh, utilize as well. And if you double click you, you can actually see it a uh, bigger one. So you can see a bigger view into the slider and, and change it. Of course you can also enter the enter the number like um, directly from there um, or, or so. So so you have different options to deal with these values. And then if, if you have a controller, then you could also assign that to a controller or kind of a, to, to kind of deal with your sense within controllers like SSL. But that's basically how you quickly get the parallel processing ongoing. Then another thing that you, you would like to do is to do a submix, submix in a way that you, you create a kind of a folder uh, into which you sum all these tracks. And that's basically when you go here you, and you say that, you know, back folder, you select the tracks that you want to use and then you say back folder. And um, now the folder is packed and, um, and you have, have it basically um, when you open it up, you only see the tracks then. And, and then when you close it, you don't see them in the mixer. However, if you want to use this as a bus, as currently you see that these are now routed to the main. So they don't go into any bus. They both go to the main independently. You go over here and actually say that add a bus channel. Bam. And now you have the bus added. So you can say that I have the bus. So I have the bus here. 
So now when you go over here and, and do exactly right click or from here and, and say that, you know, add a bus, then that's where one, once it creates the bus for you and automatically also then assigns these individual tracks to be sent into that bus and the bus gets sent to the main. So that's basically how you do that. Uh, anyway, as same as, as basically in um, in uh, Ableton Live in Studio One, you can also do parallel processing within a single track. And how do you do that? Is actually you do that by using a splitter from here. So you basically go over here and add a splitter. And then now you see that there is a splitter in here. And then you basically drag and drop the, the, the effect into the channel because it is now splitting the audio to two channels. And, um, and, and so, so you have the dry signal and then you have the fully, full, fully wet, wet signal, which, which is basically the, the vintage verb. And, um, and so, so now you are doing a parallel processing with the splitter and um, you can of course control the splitter as well as you saw maybe a, a glimpse of it. So when I open it up and I'll, I'll bring this down, uh, down into neg neg negative 100. And then when I increase the volume on the other channel or send to another channel, then it starts to do parallel processing in in, in a way that it would be sent into a, 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 a channel next to it or kind of an effect bus. So this is actually a pretty handy way to kind of do it do it in, in, in a way that um, it, it does a parallel processing within within um, within um, the track itself and like in um, like in a um, Ableton Live you could also here go and assign this knob into basically into that um, splitter but uh, that goes to a bit more advanced but anyway this is how you can control it and and use the splitter to do parallel processing within a track and not needing to send it to uh, to any other other track for that reason. This is kind of like more a for the sound design type of a thing, so that uh, that you would use it more for the sound to design it to be more lush or whatever. And and so, but but this is actually extremely handy, and this is kind of great thing. So so that's 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 the end. and then kind of recall that if you would like to saying chain these things that you know this would actually the 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 from a, from a reverb it would go to the delay so you can of course chain these sense as well so that that uh, this channel will send into into verb and then the verb will send it into a delay so quite many things are possible or actually a lot of things are possible over here and um, and this is basically what what and how you do it in um, in in studio one one thing that we haven't looked yet is is that um, let's remove the splitter and let's remove the remove the um, the, the effect is one thing that we haven't discussed is uh, side chaining and how to apply a side chaining in um, in um, in Studio One. So let's go and let's maybe take the one that we have used uh, in in others. So let's go and take Pro C and add it over here. How to do the side chaining in uh, in the sense that you usually you wanna side chain the kind of the kick and uh, with with the main audio. So I, I, I just drag the kick into and, and now if I play and I don't have any sidechain, I even take that off. So so 
So now both both are sent sent to the bus and bus to the main. And then there is no kind of side chaining taking place. But then if I would like to, for example, duck this audio with the kick, then I go into the uh, to the compressor and the side chaining actually takes place in, in, in Studio One quite neatly over here. So now I can select what audio I will I will basically then uh, and then then get uh, and um, and then I receive this from the output channel and or I could receive it from the send. So I can also do a send that uh, I I control the amount of sidechain that I'm sending or I do it directly from the output. Let's do it in this case directly from the output and take the external uh, signal in and now when we start and put let's put the threshold like drastically down so that you can you can see physically when the key, when the audio starts to kind of duck when uh, when the the kick signal hits hits in from the sidechain and um, yeah we have it selected over there and let's play I just made it this so extreme so that you can see that how drastically the audio is ducking when the, the kick is coming in and then in the bottom of here you can actually see the audio coming from the kick and you could of course in this case with this um, this compressor you could even side uh, like the side chain could be EQ'd so that you take certain part of the sound that basically is influencing the, the compressor. So it's quite neat. Anyway, this is how you do the side chaining in uh, in a um, studio one, and uh, and then of course you can enable it and disable it by here. So. Uh, So yeah, but that's pretty much all the things that um, are regarding on audio routing and audio processing uh, in, in general. So we have went through that, you know, how to deal with tracks, channels, buses, sends. And then we have also looked how to do the sidechain processing, uh, parallel processing and submixing our bus mix. In, in that respect and how to create those. So that's how we, how you do it in Studio One. So that was Studio One. And um, next we will jump into Universal Audio Luna and do the same things over there. So remember to subscribe for the channel for more content. Thanks for watching. Bye now.